everybody. Welcome to Start Out's event, Successful Sales and Marketing Practices for Introverts. My name is Cindy, and today's conversation is going to be brought to you by Start Out. And I'm sure many of you know what Start Out is, but for those of you new to Start Out, Start Out is a nonprofit organization whose mission is to accelerate growth in the LGBTQ plus community, to champion our LGBTQ plus entrepreneurs and support the community with events, programs for founders, mentorship, and more. So for more information about Start Out, please visit startout.org. My name is Cindy Lamar, and I will be your moderator for this conversation on introversion. I'm the founder of Magneto Consulting, where I'm a life and leadership coach and do instructional design. And today we'll be speaking with three self-proclaimed introverts who will share their stories, marketing practices, and techniques for boosting your success as an entrepreneur or professional at an organization. So we're going to have each person introduce themselves, um, but just so you know who the panelists are, as you can see their names on the screen. So we're just gonna jump right in. Sandra, could you please kick us off with an introduction? Yes, uh, dialing in from Windy, Los Angeles, but hello everybody, thank you for joining. My name is Sandra Sick, she, her. I'm originally from New York, but I've been out in Southern California for a long time. I have a long career working in marketing and marketing and sales operations, business development for mostly tech companies. Um, I also had a stint of living in Europe. I lived in the Czech Republic for a while, and I also lived um, in Lisbon for four years working in their uh, evolving uh, startup ecosystem, which was very, very interesting. So that's a quick update about me, but I am a full-time marketing consultant handling a lot of different uh, projects um, it, with tech companies based in, uh, in and around the U.S. Awesome. Well, I see you've been many places and uh, we're really glad to have you here with us now. Thea, why don't you go next? All right. Hi, my name is Thea. Um, I'm also in Los Angeles. I'm in Pasadena. Um, so hi, Sandra. Hi, everybody here in Pasadena and Los Angeles in general. Um, I run Introvertology, which is a um, company that supports introverts. Um, I've been running this for about eight years now. It began as a hobby um, and then quickly turned into a business after I got quite a few people joining my um, Facebook page. It was 10,000. And I was like, OK, you know, I, I need to do something with this. Um, right now, it started as um, for, you know, just kind of personal help for introverts, and now um, I focus on um, business owners. So, introvertology.com, and um, I'm also an MBTI practitioner, and basically my whole ethos is that people should work with their personality instead of against it, um, and really lean into their strengths. That's awesome um, for everyone, but particularly for introverts. All right, and now we will have Romika tell us a little bit about herself. Hey everyone, I am Romika and I am coming out of Seattle. She, her are my pronouns and I am a certified life coach. I am also a uh, certified recovery coach. I work with people in recovery and addiction and I help them to gain uh, confidence in their life and move forward. And other than that, uh, I'm super grateful. I've been coaching for two years now, and I'm super grateful to be a part of this panel today, being an introvert myself and having gone through some of the challenges that a lot of introverts face. Uh, I feel like that this will be an awesome discussion. So we're really looking forward to it today. We sure are. And someone just asked for um, Thea's website. So we popped that into the chat. And a little bit before that, we popped in our free community portal for Start Out. So keep your eyeballs on the chat when you're not looking at us and you will get some great resources throughout this conversation. All right, so I think it makes sense for us to sort of get a working definition of what introversion is. I'm sure if you signed up for this call, you have some idea, um, but let's talk a little bit more about what it is, how it shows up in each of your lives, any common myths or misconceptions that you've heard. Um, so we're gonna go back to you, Ramika, and see what your thoughts are on introversion and how it affects you. So for me, for me, introversion is really about your energy and how you manage your energy. So for example, if you're an extrovert, 
you get your energy from actually being social, from actually around people themselves. And for as an introvert, I get my energy or introverts in general or people who are more on the introvert side get their energy by like through solitude. So that could be just, you know, being by yourself. And I find in my personal experience, just being around people for long periods of time, I need to actually be by myself to recharge. I have no problem actually speaking to people or having conversations with people. And I think that sometimes that's a misconception about introversion is that if you're an introvert, you don't really like to talk to people. But I found in my journey and other introverts that I've worked with in the past that uh, you can actually have a really wide network. You can be social and you can meet people, but you just recharge by yourself. So that's how I see introversion. Okay, and I see you shaking your head, Thea. So why don't you jump in next and tell us your thoughts? Yeah, so um, I agree with Romika. Generally, I describe introversion as um, needing to be kind of by yourself to recharge. Um, introverts are actually 56.8% of the population, so um, we're, we're a big percentage. Um, and it's, I think it's important to realize that there's a lot of different personality um, types within that umbrella. Um, so I kind of like to keep the um, definition of introversion as, as fairly broad, um, which is like Ramika says, you know, you um, recharge by being alone versus um, by being with others. Um, I also want, I think Ramika kind of touched on this, but um, I also want to point out that it's different from being shy. So um, shy people, have a fear of judgment, um, and that's that's a lot different than where you get your energy. So there's different. There's shy extroverts and there's shy introverts, and many introverts are not shy. Interesting. I'm learning already. I kind of had associated shyness with introversion as well. So thank you for clarifying that. And Sandra, how about you? Tell us what your yes. thoughts are. Yes, that's exactly the point I was going to start with, with that introversion is not shyness. <clears throat> it, it can be more um, inner inner peace, inner strength, uh, more internal, um, but it certainly um, uh, is a personality uh, characteristic and strength. And I'm a, a follower of Myers-Briggs in personality tests that I've taken over time, you know, and especially early in my career to kind of see what the person my personality type was and you know what kind of strengths that would lend for certain kind of careers and over time i've taken uh myers briggs like maybe maybe once a decade so sometimes you know i'm an introvert and sometimes i'm an extrovert but more more introverted and again going back to the point that the other panelists made in the sense of how we recharge how we in our downtime replenish ourselves to be highly productive people awesome so i'm pretty sure that um, you've covered a lot of what might have been in people's minds questions around what exactly is introversion it sounds like there's no one size fits all just like every other label we have to take into account people's personalities, their backgrounds, their cultures even, um, before we decide somebody's an introvert or somebody's an extrovert, right? So thank you very much for that. Um, and I see somebody says perfect in the uh, chat there. So that's good. All right, so um, so how about some techniques? You know, um, a lot of people came here looking for things that are gonna help them on their journey as an introvert. Um, and perhaps some people have called in who might not be introverts, but who want to understand the introverts in their lives better. I'm married to an introvert. And so I was really happy to sign up to moderate so I could learn more about what she's doing. All right, so what are some techniques or approaches that have worked for all of you or any of you in your career when it comes to marketing yourself or selling your business? This time I'm gonna pop over to Thea. Um. So what works best for me is um, I'm an INFJ, and, and if you follow the um, Myers-Briggs uh, type indicator talk, as Sandra just mentioned, um, and INFJs tend to be people persons, so that might seem a little weird for those of you who are new to like introversion, but as I said, you know, shy and introvert, different things. Um, so I tend to like to actually um, organize groups. So a lot of what I do is 
um, I used to run a, um, a meetup group. I have a Facebook group. I have these social media accounts. And um, I also sometimes do masterminds and things like that for introvert introverts. Um, so I enjoy um, kind of the mass marketing aspect of, of marketing. Um, but obviously, if you're watching this, you know, there, it's not one size fits all. It, it depends on what your personality is and what your business is and how can you reach your customers because not everyone's on social media. You might do, you know, email marketing or, or networking or something like that. Um, so for me, you know, I tend to want to make the biggest impact for the least amount of socializing. So I like to do um, a podcast, things like that. Um, you know, the Facebook group, I just have to post it to one per one Facebook group and then I can reach, you know, a few thousand depending on if it's my group or someone else's. So that's the way I like to do it. Hey, so kind of like the group, the herd, uh, the herd, the group, yeah. bringing a bunch of people together. Okay, cool. Before we continue, I just want to say if you just joined us, we're here with Romika, Sarah, and Thea discussing how to successfully market and sell as an introvert. And I've just asked them each to give us a little bit more information uh, regarding some techniques or approaches that have worked for them in their careers. So let's take it away, Romika. Yeah, so just like Thea, I'm also an INFJ. And interestingly, I have taken a lot of other personality and assessment tests, one of which in the resource list I have included in here for everybody that they can take for free to really know your entrepreneurship style. But it's interesting because as an introvert, I'm also a, considered a people person. So my personality is suited best to connect, to, to, to really connect with people. And so for me, the way that I found uh, for me to do business is to actually build relationships and connect with people. And, you know, I've had periods in my life where, um, you know, where I didn't connect with people and I kind of was living in solitude more. And I realized that, you know, I felt better when I actually did connect with people. And these are more one-on-one. -on -one, so I want to say that, like, I, I prefer to connect with people, have more deeper conversations with people versus a lot of small talk. Although, Small talk is something that I could do pretty well too these days. And so for me, it's all about connecting and relationship building. Those are the two biggest things that have really helped me in my business. Fantastic. Yeah, it is about the relationships, isn't it? All right, Sandra, tell us your, yes. your techniques and approaches and help uh, us out. I find this interesting. I'm an INTJ. So the three panelists here are, are almost the same in the Myers-Briggs. Um, but um, I would say that uh, my biggest tips, my biggest takeaways would be um, introverts can be very good listeners. So use that to your advantage. Also, I feel I'm very intuitive. Uh, you know, many introverts may feel a very, very strong uh, sense of being intuitive, and that's a very competitive advantage as, as well. Um, uh, there's also the idea, and you know, life is very different now that we're coming out of a pandemic because we've all been home doing what we've been doing, you know, in uh, the confines of our own home or uh, on the safety of, of video. But um, you know, before COVID, um, I certainly was out networking, and uh, I like to micro network. You know, not always in the biggest uh, groups, and I can, um, you know, I can talk to anybody, and you know, small talk is you know small talk. But um, you know, choosing uh, the environment in which I like to uh, conduct business and and meet people and have more of a connection. Uh, are, are three of the things that I would put at the top of my list for focusing my energy and keeping my energy high and my attention to accomplishing, you know, the things I want to accomplish in building my business and ultimately working with the types of clients that um, I really like to work with and often attracting clients that have uh, a similar energy as well. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that brings us, thank you all very much, to energy and energy management. And I think that sounds like there's maybe a difference between introverts and extroverts when it comes to managing 
their energy. We've had a few interesting um, comments in the chat. Somebody brought up the fact that they're an ambivert. And um, so they, I believe, have a little bit of both. And I don't know whether it's situational or if anybody wants to speak to that. Um, but what we're gonna do next is kind of find out a little bit more about how each of you manages your energy because a big part of business is marketing and networking and building relationships. And um, being around a lot of people uh, can actually take its toll on an introvert and even an extrovert. So maybe you can speak to, depending on who the people are, right? So let's talk a little bit more about um, that. Um, so what are some ways that you recharge your energy when you're in a social situation and when you're marketing yourself? Because you can go home and recharge, but sometimes you know, you're at an event and uh, if you are not speaking, can you please um, mute yourselves? Um, you know, sometimes you need to recharge while you're still at the event. So maybe you could share a couple of things that you might do if, say, you are networking or you're at an event where you're trying to build relationships. How do you recharge? Um, Thea. Um, it really depends on um, what the situation is. Well, I'm sorry. Distracting noise. <laughs> sorry. Yeah, this, oh. this, something's happening. <laughs> or your your <laughs> cats, perhaps. Um, so, yeah, it depends Thank on you. what the situation is. If mm -hmm. I'm, you know, doing some public speaking, um, I really try to minimize my interaction with people beforehand because um, I want to get on the stage and I want to be, you know, on immediately instead mm -hmm. of being drained. Um, if you know if if i'm going to be um, networking for a, a long time i might have to um step into the restroom for a few minutes and just kind of like stand there <laughs> and just scroll through my phone or step outside or something like that um because not only am i an introvert but i'm also a highly sensitive person so if you haven't heard of that just type in highly sensitive person in, in google hsp um, and you learn that highly sensitive people, um, it's more about overstimulation. So it's not just socializing. It's also noise. It's also possibly, um, for some people, lights, things like that. So toleration for, um, you know, the senses <laughs> is, uh, is a little higher. Um, no, it's a little lower for um, highly sensitive people. Um, but yeah, in terms of you know, being in a, in a networking social situation for a while, I just kind of try to um, take myself back, um, give myself a little distance from, from socializing for a while. Sometimes just, you know, lean up against the wall and just stare at every, everybody until I feel the most like myself again and then get back out there. Mm -hmm. Okay, so just like step away to a quiet place and yeah, take a few breaths and then you know, you can, you can go back in. Okay, anybody do something similar or different from what Thea does to recharge within a social situation? Yeah, I would, I would say it's, it's very much the same. If there's an opportunity to also maybe step away and have uh, pop in your earbuds and listen to a little music uh, and you know, take a little bit of a different break to uh, calm them down, whatever energy may be building. Mm -hmm. is, is another option. Sounds good. Ramika, anything to add? Yeah, for me, uh, a lot of my energy ma management really comes from outside of like social situations. And believe it or not, I actually enjoy the social situation, the social aspect, which creates this dilemma, right? Because being an introvert, I do get exhausted a little bit more easier than like say my extrovert extrovert friends but at the same time I love talking to people I love conversating meeting new people all that good stuff so I find that for me what the, there's a ton of tools that really do work for me but I think some of the more simple ones and these are going to sound really simple but trust me they work is working out or having some kind of an exercise regimen I've, I've just noticed on times like when I've tracked my uh, exercise and that could just be something as simple as putting in like 20 minutes of walking a day, or if you wanna do more, obviously, you know, that's even better, but just getting some movement in has given me like so much more energy throughout the day. Obviously eating healthy, 
drinking water, taking cold showers, which I'm going to be starting up again. These are all things that really do help with your energy. I also recommend something that's helped me too is something called body work, really working on your limiting beliefs, getting your confidence up, reprogramming your mind. Because as an introvert, we're naturally more susceptible to getting tired. And some of that can come from your mindset, from your negative programming and some, some of the, it could be stored in your body. So to have maximum energy, like I highly recommend doing all of these things. There's so many different modalities, you can look it up, but these are just some of the things that I've done that have worked so beautifully in my life and I highly recommend them. Those are awesome. And, uh, you know, coach to coach, it's really important for us to not only be in our heads, right? Like we sometimes separate how we're feeling from how we're thinking. And, you know, business has actually taught us to kind of put our emotions on the side while we're at the office. But the truth is your emotions are always there under the surface. And so if you can work with them, as Romika says, get to know your body, work out, um, exercise, the cold shower. I don't know if I'm ready for that, but I have heard that going from warm to cold is really healthy for us. So something that kind of, you know, invigorates you could be good for introverts in particular, but for, for all of us, probably. Um, I got to so, say, yeah, yeah. I got to say, Cindy, that that cold shower one was really hard for me. I stopped for a while, but I just uh -huh. recently starting it up again, but it does do work. It works wonders. Okay, someone's asking how, like, what do you think is, is, is behind that? What do you think, you know, without going too scientific on us here, what, do you, what are your thoughts on why that's helpful for you? It was a question in the chat, so. Just from, this is just from what, what I read and the research that I did, and, and just the way that I felt is that it, I think it puts your body into shock and it, and it allows, it's good for your metabolism, it's good for your, uh, like, depression and your mood, and I think it does something to be honest, I don't really quite know the mechanics, like the science behind it, but I know that there is like research and studies done, mm -hmm. but I just know that I have more energy by taking a cold shower and I only will be doing it in the morning. So, cause it's not easy. It's, it's tough, but it works. <laughs> right. 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 Maybe doing it at night is not so great because it's going to wake you up and then you're not going to be able to sleep. So if you're going to try it, try it in the morning. I do sometimes go a little bit cooler, but not quite the cold. That that's some ballsy stuff right there. Okay, so pardon my language. Anyway. Yeah, but we've got some, we've got some other people here who are taking cold showers. So are we are or just going up in the chat? People are jumping yeah. in. Awesome, yeah. awesome. We got a cold shower club here. Hey, yeah. <laughs> listen. And if it's like hailing or whatever everybody was saying it was, and you jump in the cold shower, my hat is off to you. Um, okay, great. So I want to throw this in there because um, we talked a little bit about networking and social events. For somebody who's maybe starting their careers out, you know, or the kind of maybe they're switching to a new role, so they don't really know people, and they find themselves in a company or on a new team, like how do they? How do the introverts start? Like, what would you suggest they do in that kind of a situation where they're either new to the working game or at a new company or in a new role, what are some things that you might offer them as a way to kind of break the ice and start like getting to know people? Um, Sandra, I saw you shaking your head. Yeah. Maybe you want to say something. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, let, let me start with uh, uh, those that will be starting and working with a big company. I mean, looking for kind of subgroups, uh, looking at the portal, trying to connect with people internally before, you know, kind of going to the big corporate events, thinking they're going to just uh, delve right in and maybe not feel so comfortable. Um, but uh, um, yeah, taking it slow, you know, uh, do it, do it feels right, exactly uh, in their comfort level. And, you know, there will be a lot of other introverts uh, in an organization. So they'll, they'll find that comforting as they, you know, um, meet more people in the organization and, and also move within the organization and have more responsibility. Sounds like a great plan. Anybody have anything to add to that? One of the things for me that I, I like to do is, is, especially when I had maybe troubles conversating with a lot of people or was a little bit shy before, is asking myself, like, what, what is the reason, like, I'm having 
you know, these thoughts, like what are the thoughts that I'm having? So I got a little bit more introspective around it to really know, like, is it, is it just because I feel like, you know, I might say something or I might sound awkward. So really, I think a good thing to do starting off is just kind of become aware of the thoughts in your head when you're approaching someone to talk to them and start off slow, right? Like that's the best way. Just talk to one person, maybe, you know, and, and as introverts, that's easier to do anyway. We, we, we like that, the deeper conversations yeah. uh, with more substance. So that's my recommendation. Yes, someone said, yes, that's good advice. That is good advice. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, so my recommendation is basically a, a combination of Sandra's and Rumika. So awesome. um, I think, you know, as Sandra said, there's probably gonna be lots of groups within the corporation. Um, sometimes there's like knitting groups or book clubs and stuff like that. So that's another way of meeting people. And even if you aren't working in a, in a um, corporation, even if you're trying to build, you know, clientele and, and network, um, you, there's so many different um, meetup groups that are meeting online right now because I think somebody said in the chat, you know, it's still a, still a pandemic. I'm, yeah. I feel like that too. I'm not going outside and those types of networking things yet. But I do, you know, sometimes pop into a, a book club or something like that online. So that's another way to you can like meet people, but also in a controlled environment. Um, so if you're shy, often like in controlled environment where you can um, guess kind of what the conversations are, um, are usually more comfortable for shy people. So um, I, I do suggest that. Um, what else was I going to say? Oh yeah, Ramika was talking about um, one, one conversations and um, non-shy introverts tend to, um, to like those. So, you know, just start, you know, emailing um, people, talking to people, um, you know, if, if you're constantly interacting with somebody um, in another department via email, um, you know, you can ask them about the quote in their um, signature or something like that, right? You can add an interesting quote of your own um, and just look for those little opportunities for conversations. Nice. That kind of rounds it out beautifully. Thank you so much. Um, I think we can start going with a few of the questions from the audience. And then if we have more time at the end, you can share more of your tips and techniques. Um, we had one question a little while ago. What things do high extroverts do, perhaps innocently, that you wish they could stop doing so much? Asking for a friend. Hmm. I love that. <laughs> Anybody want to weigh in on what extroverts can do? And he says, high extroverts, the people who are like really out there doing their thing, like what can they do or stop doing? Um, so much. Is that for any, is it anybody? For anybody. Else? Yeah, anybody. Can answer that. I would say if I can give maybe one piece of advice for my extrovert friends would be uh, listen more. And I'm not saying that extroverts don't listen because, you know, we, we all could listen, but I think that would be something that would really, really just uh, implementing uh, listening skills would really just take things over the top for extroverts. Okay. Yeah, and I would add that I think a great life hack uh, kind of in any situation is eye contact. You know, as you know, give people eye contact in different situations and assess them, whether it's high level extrovert and introvert and, and then go from there. I mean, we're all uh, monitoring our own temperament, you know, some more than others and this is not a one size fit, fits all, but you know we can all uh, use uh, some more eye contact to connect with people and 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 you know make them more comfortable, make room for them. Sure. So one yeah. thing, um, I think the question was about what what um, do we wish high extroverts could stop doing. Um, stop doing sure. Yeah. Either start or stop is is fine. Yeah. Um, <laughs> So I, if you're, if you have a team and if you're a manager or in the corporate situation or you're an entrepreneur and you have a team, um, I would actually suggest getting to know the individuals in your team and really talk to them about how, 
um, the shy people, whether they're shy extroverts or shy introverts, how to incorporate them in the team conversations. Because some people like to be called out, other people do not want to be called out, and it's a very individual thing. Um, so I would really suggest, you know, you, you approach um, everybody as an individual. If you know someone's an introvert, don't necessarily think, oh, well, they need to be called out. Um, talk to them, ask them, you know, how, how do you want me to um, make sure that you have um, a voice in our um, team meetings. Um, and in general, like, you know, introverts, a lot of introverts prefer to have, um, you know, um, information beforehand to think about um, before they go into meetings as well. So um, really talk to the introverts, say, you know, what can I do to support you? Yes. Yes, absolutely. And that was actually also um, highlighted in the chat. Um, a person sort of responded to that question saying that, you know, rather than just trying to introduce them or include them in the conversation, maybe ask if they want to listen or participate rather than just assuming that you're being gracious by bringing them in. Maybe they really want to just like check things out and not be yanked into the conversation. <laughs> so thank you on the chat and thank you, Thea, for that. Um, let me see, I'm just popping through the chat and then I'm gonna go to the Q&A because we've got like four questions lined up over there. So let's see. Um, yeah, people who went to conferences used to like to go back to their room and kind of get some quiet time. I actually should like to do that too. Um, let's see. Da, da, da. Yeah, don't force people to be present. Um, let's see. I mean, they're present. They just might not be saying anything. Okay, let's see. Um, all right, so I'm going to pop right on over here to the Q&A, and let's see. Oh, okay. This is a, a little bit of a spin on the question I asked earlier. What do you suggest to connect with people when starting at a new company and you're starting off remotely? It can be challenging when you are an introvert already and you are off site. Absolutely. So, you know, it's one thing when you're bought into the office, it's another thing when you're trying to meet people remotely as an introvert. So, you know, you're online, there's tons of people or there's people on the screen. What are your thoughts around trying to, to break in there? Yeah, I'll jump in here in that, um, yeah, these are really uh, interesting times with people um, studying at home, working at home, new into careers. Um, I, I've i seen a trend, obviously, in, in this time that we've been uh, working remotely, where there are a lot of theme-based events. So if you're, um, you know, or, or meetings or uh, companies are celebrating things after hours to try to uh, get people together. If you feel comfortable, take part. It starts to show your personality style, um, you know, whether it's gay pride, whether it's Halloween and getting involved or suggesting events uh, or gatherings that you would be comfortable in an organization, in your department, on your team, um, that you could, you know, uh, feel a little more comfortable or, or feel more like a master in and and let the people uh, know uh, the, more about you and share more of your your personal uh, side if, if you feel comfortable. Solid. Does anybody want to add to that or should we go on to the next question? Yeah, I think we know. Solid answer to that. Okay. All right. Um, so we have another question. I just started my business as an introvert. How do I build a clientele when I'm the only person in my business? Also, what are your actions to reduce the anxiety of having to reach out to clients? Great questions, guys, and gals. Yeah, you want to go first or? <laughs> sure. <laughs> <laughs> um, so how do I build client when I'm the only person in my business? Well, first of all, you know, understand that you don't have to do all of the marketing techniques that are out there. So a lot of my clients that come to me, they're like, I'm supposed to be on all the social media sites, right? And I'm supposed to go to networking events and I'm supposed to do this and this and this and this. It's like, no, you don't have to do all of them. Um, because, you know, if you're a solopreneur, you're also doing all the other stuff in the business. Um, so really find out where your clients, um, your potential clients 
um, showing up online or in person or on print or whatever and, and reach them, right? You don't, if you're trying to market to 80 year olds, don't go on TikTok, right? So um, really be, be mindful um, of the best marketing pra practice for you and your business um, and focus on that, but also be willing to, um, to pivot. So um, I would say that first, like if, if it's too intimidating, try and figure out like, okay, I'm gonna do two marketing um, uh, practices. I'm gonna you know, do social media and email, and then that's it, right? Or a free Amazon um, book or something. So just you know, focus on, don't try and do everything at once, just focus on a few types of marketing techniques. Um, second question is, what are your actions to reduce the anxiety of having to reach out to clients? Um, yeah, I've, I've had to work on this for a while myself. Um, eventually what helped me was um, to really let go of the idea that I was bothering people. Um, so, you know, that was also a um, stumbling block when it came to sales too. Like I didn't want to, I don't want to feel like I was pressuring people. I didn't want to be bothering people. Um, but really what helped me was just to um, remind myself and, well, therapy also, but <laughs> reminding myself, yeah, <laughs> that um, I, I exist in this world. Like I can take up as much space as everybody else in this world and what I have, what I'm selling is useful to people. Like it's not, it's not gonna be it for everybody. Not everybody has, wants what I have, what I'm selling, but some people really need it. So, you know, partially it's believing your product, partially it's believing in yourself as well. Yeah, I'll, I'll jump in two things. Uh, referrals, any clients, even your first new client, you've got a good working relationship. If you see on um, any of the social media networks that they may have, uh, you may have mutual friends or they may know uh, a company you're interested in, definitely, you know, ask for the referral. And uh, any uh, business that you've got going that's going well, ask for a testimonial and use, use that as much as you can in all the places that you can, especially the more visible uh, the client, the company is, your client's company, the more success you've had, any percentage that you could quote. I know it seems daunting reaching out to people. Um, hopefully, uh, the more you do it, the more confidence you have and the more it becomes comfortable. But to Thea's point, like, the, the not beating yourself up thinking that you're uh, trying to grab people's time. Everyone's busy, yes. But if you have a good, clean pitch, good follow up, it's a good start and you can build that skill that you're developing. And uh, Jonathan, by the way, good luck with all of that. Just to add to what uh, Thea and Sandra say, pretty much just kind of along alongside with what they're saying is also something I'm not actually sure uh, the attendee, what your reasons are behind like why you're feeling some of the anxiety. Um, I don't know if you want to state that on there. It could give me a better idea. But I would say, um, along with the, what Theo was saying too about marketing, is that attraction marketing is like really big. I think for anybody here that's maybe more uh, on the shy side or maybe are not used to really dealing with a lot of people, attraction marketing is probably the best way to go. And in general, it's just having a product, right, or a service that is so good that you really believe in, that you stand for. And when you have that confidence and you, sh and you show up and you, you know your product is gonna be able to solve your customer's problems, that alone will take away a lot of that anxiety. And I think the second thing is too is, is for me, I think one of the things that really helped me is when I'm out meeting people or networking, I don't do it with obviously the intention of selling my services. It's just for the pure intention of like meeting people. But when I tell them what I do, I say it with certainty. And I think that's a huge thing is really being so certain in what you do in your product. And that alone is going to attract the right people to you. I, I firmly believe that. So that's another way that another kind of thing that you can look into. And um, yeah, so that's kind of what I have to say about that. Wonderful. So, you know, always have your purpose in mind 
And keep coming back to that. If you start slipping, if you start feeling like, who am I, what am I doing? Always come back to that purpose because that's what's driving you. And that's what people are gonna be attracted to if they're interested in your service. Um, someone dropped a, a, um, a website in the chat. It's called introvertfriendlynetwork.com. So I haven't seen that before. I don't know if either of you, any of you have seen it before, but it might be something that you wanna check out um, if you are an introvert. Um, so we got a few more questions. I'm gonna pull them out. Let's see. Do you recommend any good ways um, for an introvert to stand out, um, to help for business development, or in big crowds, I'm kind of paraphrasing it a little bit here, um, such as may not stand up in a big crowd and ask great impressive questions and presentations, but try to diligently network one-on-one -on -one instead. Like, is that what you would recommend? So how do you stand out as an introvert? Um, yeah, let me let me answer that. Um, it, that looks like a great opportunity. When I'm at events and I don't want to run to the front of the line to ask the question, uh, I will often wait and try to meet the speaker after the fact, have my card ready, have my ask ready, or um, tweet some of their quotes, uh, post some of their quotes during an event, things that resonate with you and you know, follow them and see if you can start a dialogue that way to just connect with them um, and, and try to build something from there. Uh, a lot of events do have uh, various kind of cocktail events after if there's that opportunity, but you know, try to make a, a contact in a few other a few other touch points that you may find through social media. Okay, um, I'm just gonna rapid fire. Let's see, we have another question. I'm really excited about marketing and diving deep into it. Yes, I wanna get into marketing for my business and possibly for a new role. What specific things can I do to help me learn marketing and real world things that I can do to start marketing? Um, okay, I can start that off. Well, awesome. So, I one of the things is that marketing is a very broad term. <laughs> so, <laughs> So, you know, start with um, researching, like, what is marketing? Like, what's the difference between marketing and sales, right? There's lots of times people get confused about those. Um, there's lots of, there's just so many um, resources online, right? I think if you're interested in social media marketing, Hootsuite has some, I believe, free marketing classes. Um, I've heard that those are good. So, you know, start looking at marketing um, courses. I've taken a number of courses from Seth Godin um, and he does things very differently. He, he's more like stepping into your power, um, but but not in a, like a woo woo way, more like, you know, believe in what you're selling. Um, so I really like his his work because he's he um, kind of his approach to marketing is choose um, the approach, the marketing approach you're going to do, but then Okay, I can't, I can't paraphrase it, but basically um, there's the overarching way you're going to be marketing, like, you know, have a business um, that really gives off kindness, right? But the way you do that might change um, from year to year because you're pivoting with what the, um, with what your clients are doing, let's say that. Um, so I think that's, that's a really interesting when I heard him say that, it made a lot of sense to me, right? So um, marketing, there's, anyway, there's there's a lot to marketing. Like, start looking it up. What are you interested in marketing? What's your, what's going to be your niche? Like, and then just start, kind of start learning. Yeah, I mean, there's Coursera. There's all kind of online uh, opportunities. Uh, LinkedIn has things for free. There's colleges, local community colleges. You know, pick your area of expertise. I mean, are you leaning more towards a maybe creative area? Do you want to write? Is advertising of interest to you? Um, planning events. Uh, we're planning events now in a very different way. That's uh, uh, event companies are back. They're doing things. So, pick an area. Uh, follow the, the 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 leaders in your space or in your city. In your you know, if you like music or if you like art or if you like tech, whatever your your interests are, and try to zero in on that. 
And this is also like an area where I feel like your personality tests or whatever your assessments are really come into play. And I just wanna mention, um, I'm not sure if anybody here is familiar with the human design, but that is something that I have personally taken and I found it to be extremely helpful. So uh, something to look into, it's called human design and that will really show you what your personality is like, how you're best suited to market your business, how you're best suited to actually communicate with people. Some other tests too that I wanted to mention here, and, and maybe we can, uh, these are not actually added in the resource list. So maybe we can add them somehow, or maybe in the email that we send out after we can let everybody know, because okay. I wanna make sure that everyone gets all of, the, all of the assessment tests here because they are so helpful. And a lot of these are free. And one of them is the four tendencies. There's also wealth dynamics and uh, the love language. Knowing even your love language can help you to actually really become aligned with the way that you do business. And for me, it's all about alignment. Like how are you actually, the more aligned you are through your personality, the way you do business, that's gonna give you the fuel and the motivation. And like, like I said, the energy to actually continue to, to grow your business and be successful. For sure. And someone's asking, can you repeat those? <laughs> yes. Definitely, and, and we'll be we'll include this in the email too uh, that that gets sent out after the yeah. event. But it's uh, the four tendencies and the human design, wealth dynamics, and the love language. Okay, awesome. That's great. So we still have a little bit of time. So I'm going to keep going through those questions. I do want you to know that this is being recorded and it will be available on YouTube shortly. So when you get your follow-up email, there'll be a link to the YouTube of this actual event. Um, so if you know someone who wanted to see it and didn't, please share that link with them. Um, I'm going to keep going. So how do you manage becoming drained during the workday when you are unable to leave your workspace? Hmm. I can start off with that and say, okay. for me, I, I, I do deep breathing and, you know, I could just take a break somewhere and just take some like really deep breaths. Uh, Wim Hof is a great uh, resource for that. If you don't know how to spell his name, I think it's W-I-M-H-O-F-F, -F. but just doing some deep, uh, really deep breathing can really bring, restore some of that energy. Uh, and meditation, but deep breathing seems to be the thing for me. Mm -hmm. Anybody else have any others? You know, you're sitting at your desk, either in person or even remotely. Sometimes you don't have a break. Sometimes people are back to back to back to back meetings, I keep hearing. So yeah, breathing. I mean, honestly, it's great even before you go to a meeting to just stop and collect yourself and take a couple of deep breaths and sort of arrive, you know, with your breath <laughs> as opposed to rushing and then like ah you know but yeah taking that break to just breathe nobody knows what you're doing you know it's like a little mini meditation if you can yeah. squeeze it in in your office or your cube or in your you know wherever you're working yes mm -hmm. for sure um okay we did the stand out uh, i think we're on our last question here Oh, no, not quite. Two more. I run a service-based solopreneur business, and I'm wondering if you have any recommendations for social media content that doesn't necessarily involve me slash my face, um, blog posts, here's me doing my thing, pieces and blurbs. Um, I feel you on that one. You know, sometimes you don't want to see your own face in a video on, on something or whatever. So any ideas for content that does not require the use of your own face? Sure, I'll start that one. Um, every day, every week, every month, uh, there is a theme, um, Black History Month, Women uh, History Month, etc. Uh, so look for those designated days or weeks or months that align with your business and create some content that's impactful uh, around that. Uh, if you're reading any books and you find some compelling information and quotes, you know, be a thought leader through other thought leaders of grabbing those important messages, podcasts, et cetera. Um, and there's, there's so many tools, you know, to create more compelling social media that have, you know, all kinds of uh, 
photos as photo archives already without having to use your own imagery um you know online but uh, those are those are a few things. I mean, those of us working in marketing, like we can kind of get stuck in social media uh, all day long. But, you know, yeah, it makes good to pull it away from yourself, focus on your message, uh, however else you can, other than just putting your own words in your own face. Great. Anybody want to add to that? Um, yeah. yeah. So um, there's a number of ways of doing it depends on what your business is, of course. Um, if you're a coach, you know, uh, I suggest since being a coach is so personal, you know, I do suggest that you kind of bring some of your personality and your your own viewpoints into your social media It doesn't necessarily have to be your own face. But lots of times people are curious about what your day to day life lit is like maybe you go on a walk you can take a picture of a nice tree and how that relates to your coaching or whatever um you can do that as sandra said you can you know um uh, put a put together an editorial calendar a social media calendar based on um holidays um there's actually a uh, world introvert day is january 2nd so that's a big day for me um most years i'm up you know until like i don't know 2 a.m or something <laughs> like tweeting <laughs> World introvert that. Um, so, yeah, it really depends on what your business is. If you're doing jewelry, like you can do behind the scenes, here's what I'm making now, ask questions. People love to talk about themselves. Um, you know, which of these jewelry pieces of jewelry do you like the best? Um, why is that? Like, you know, it, it, it's, there's, there's so many different ways. Um, don't feel like you have to do the, um, the, the selfies if you don't if you don't if you're not um comfortable with it but i do have to say that i wasn't comfortable with it at first but then it, it becomes enjoy it became enjoyable for me um just as kind of like a way to connect with other people so i stopped seeing it as like a um something that was communicating that i was full of myself because that's how i used to see selfies but then it became like a communication tool and like a conversation opener is kind of how I started seeing selfies. So there are different ways to look at um, the the idea of selfies if if you're thinking maybe you want to try it out. Yeah, I'd like to add. There's also a tool that I use. Um, it's a paid tool, but pretty affordable. It's called Pic P I X Teller Pic Teller. And if you want to create uh, social media graphics, they really make it very easy. They size it for all the different social media channels. You can animate it. You can pull in your own photos, your own templates. You can use theirs. You can change the colors. Very user friendly. So, I mean, there's one issue of coming up with creative things that are not using all your own personal kind of IP. Uh, but uh, if you're not using a tool like Pigteller, it can make it a little easier to have a, a huge uh, ready available source of colors, photography templates uh layouts ideas it's very uh inspirational as well for coming up with new visuals awesome so we're almost out of time i want to direct people to the chat because people are dropping all kinds of cool resources in there and i want to get to our last question really quickly i've just moved to a new geographic context ecosystem and i'm interested in forging new connections in another artistic sector spheres circles what would be suggestions for a starting point i'm in la and i'm craving to forge connections in film visual art entertainment industries etc also understand that building a network takes time so and also balancing the need with increasing client base and yada yada so real quick how do you get started in la how could what's a good starting point i just yes. want to add really quick uh, I'm not in LA, the local area, but I just want to say to that is to look up on Meetup and see like different um, different meetups on your actual like in the film industry, or I don't know what it was specifically, but just look on Meetup and go to those and just just even if you don't want to do it all the time, like I always say, it's better to do it even once a month or twice a month if you can, than to not do it at all. But I think it's really important to. Uh, to look for for that connection and just make it happen. Fantastic. Um, yes, Thea, one last thing. So, so okay, here's my big networking, going to networking um, and meetup um, 
suggestion. So this really helped me. So I think one of the things that really differentiates between introverts and extroverts is that often extroverts are more are looking forward to networking events more than introverts. Mm -hmm. um, there was a study like involving Ritalin and, and boring um, videos. I won't I won't describe it because it's you know it's a boring study. But basically, what I do is if I know I want to go to a networking event and I sign up for it, I put it on my calendar and I put the reasons why. I rate it one to five. You know, five being, I really want to go to this, and I put Y. I want to go to this because X, Y, Z. And then when the time comes to leave the house, I remember that reason why I want to go. Because if I don't, it's really hard to bring back that enthusiasm for why I signed up in the first place. And then I'm, because if I don't, then I'm like, I don't want to put on, I don't want to take off these sweatpants, put real pants on. I don't want to, you know, leave the house, go traffic, like find parking, like that's too much. So, but I have, but if I have the, <laughs> if I have the um, reason why I signed up in the first place on the calendar, that really helps me to be like, okay, I should go to this networking event because X, Y, Z. Also yeah. what I add to is to what Thea said just really quickly is that something that also helps me too when I go and network is like, just think like what amazing, like, how many amazing people am I going to meet today? Like how, what amazing things are going to come out of this? And when you go with that attitude, it's like a whole, and something does like something amazing always comes out of going that way with that attitude, but it does really change your perspective. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, wow. I mean, I think we could have gone on for at least another half hour. I'm sorry, we can't. I want to be mindful of everyone's time. I want to thank our fabulous guests, Thea, Sandra, and Romika for joining us today, for sharing their wisdom, their techniques, their skill. Um, I'm gonna give them a hand over here. I see some love in the chat. This was a wonderful discussion. I learned so much. Um, we will be having more events this year. It's just February. So if you're new to start out, go check out our events. Um, we would love to have you allies, LGBTQ+, you're all welcome. Thanks for coming. And um, we'll see you at the next event. Thank you. Bye. Everybody. Take care. Bye-bye.